Say, goddamn. He said, all right, all right, all right. I said, let's do a podcast. Let's sit down. Let's get a coffee. Let's just talk about one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coffee with the sound. Got a little podcast. Grab yourself a little coffee and a podcast. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Welcome back, Josh. Hello. And as the boxers say, round two. So guys, we've tried this podcast once before. And yep. what I apologize for on the last podcast, we had mega audio gremlins and I actually lost the whole conversation. And I was fuming because I found it a few minutes after I'd got home and had to tell Josh. So you're um, back and you've got to listen to me again. We're back and we're going <laughs> to... But we're in the studio and I'd rather it be in the studio than raiding his kitchen yeah, and doing yeah. his kitchen. Yeah, this is a pretty cool environment, so <laughs> it's good to be here. Yeah, what do you think? Is it good? Yeah, yeah I like love it. it. I really like it. Yeah, it's class. It looks good. It just makes the... the it's something... It's, the conversation is so much better, yeah, and it's yeah, it's yeah, proper. It looks good, looks and the fresh. sound and the the feeling, just we still can't fix those goddamn audio yeah, gremlins. Well, <laughs> we'll get, get there in the end. So, welcome to the show, Josh, and I've got you here to talk about your professional boxing career, which you've not long stepped away from. Yeah. Um, what were you? What was your professional record in the end? Uh, twelve fights. I was six and six. Um, yeah, I was six and six, basically. But so is that when you say to people who don't know boxing, you say, is that six fo- wins? Six wins, six losses on my record, yeah. And just no draws? Uh, no, no, no. So either one way or the other? It's either one way or the other. <laughs> it's usually either one way or the other, yeah. Can you feel that in a fight? Like, as a boxer, can you feel which way the fight's going or do you feel, always feel like you're winning? No, definitely not. I mean, go back to, well, and the pros, and yeah, go back to my, some of my fights, amateurs and pros, like, you being with a good lad, and you think, fuck, you know, this is this is hard work. This is, this is not going way. But then, I've been in fights and thought, this is not going my way. And then you turn it, you you know, you can turn it round, and, and then and then next minute you're like, oh, I'm I'm back on top. And then I was kind of, I don't know. I think some people, sometimes when they get out, they've they, they've like they've they've understood how the fight has gone and they've they've read it. But I could never do that. I would kind of just be. In the fight, I would use, sometimes if you, you sometimes you know you've won, but then if it's been a hard fight and like even if I had won clearly, I sometimes wouldn't even know if I'd won if you know what I yeah, mean yeah, until yeah. The, until Cause it was so, such a... so if he got it, but everyone else knew that I won, he would get it. I'd be like, oh well, fair enough. But it, where, where maybe I should have got it, but because I could, you know, I think once you once you once it's been hard and you've took shots, I always sort of think. Oh well, I've took a few shots there. Where well, I might not have took as many, but I just I I, I sometimes just couldn't register. I wouldn't read it as well. You know what I mean? Like, does that take? Yeah. Does that take? Well, saying you've had no draws, does that take a type of mindset to think? Oh no, you you think you're taking a few points? Kill or be killed? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you're taking a um, a beating, so you think, okay, cool. I now need to get a few back, which is maybe. Though when you had that thought in your head, you might have been going for a draw. Not that you were losing. Well, no, I mean, or... you, you never, you never think that way anyway. Unless you kind of go a bit journeyman on the road, look to. You don't know who you're fighting, and well, just you just look to, to like cruise it through. And so what's a take... for people who don't do boxing? What's a journeyman? So, well, it, there's there's different types of journeyman. It, it varies, you know. So a journeyman is basically someone who fights in the away corner. Um, the stereotypically won't get much notice, which is what I, I like. Quite a few of my fights were were like that. Um, and then the either, you know, a journeyman can properly go on the road where they'll they'll fight regularly. Um, they'll they'll go to get beat, so they'll just you know talk up, look after themselves. The money. Yeah, get paid. It's a job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I, I always kind of thought. Because a lot of gentlemen were respected in boxing. I mean, they're probably generally not outside of boxing, but that's because a lot of people don't know the sport unless you're in it. Uh, but, you know, your gentlemen are respected, like, within the boxing circle. And I just thought to myself, I wouldn't mind doing that. You know, I get to fight, I train, I get paid, look after myself, sound, and make a bit of money on the side. And I had a Gordy in my last one, and I kind of didn't get out of first gear. Um, 
and then realize afterwards that's not for me. Yeah, surely that takes you a know? mindset of because... It, and, and, and like, I think, you know, it takes a strong mindset. Because you take a lot of journeymen who were, were happy to take a loss. Yeah, yeah. In that mindset. Whereas I, I, me knowing you for as long as I've known you, not long, but I know yeah. you're not happy taking a loss. Well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I, I, but not a loss, like... Uh, um, like and me being happy with it, like I I don't I don't mind I no one likes getting beat, but I don't mind getting beat if I've been beat by the better man. Yeah, you know that that is but like going there because you've gone there for that mindset of I'm a journeyman, I've gone for a fight, yeah, I've gone for so, the money. You don't yeah. go there with that winning that same mindset. Yeah, as when you so went. I turn. I mean, I remember turning up and there was a bit of a thing about my weight. I was a little bit heavier, but that I went at what I was told to be, and the promoter of the show said. You can only box if you walk walking round. Um, so I, did, I I said all right, no bother, and then I did, and it was you know it was a bit of extra cash come to Christmas, and I did it. Um, what does that mean I, if you're walking around? Walk walk him round to so walk the lad round. Basically, that means put box, on a show. Boxing terms for put on a show. Get through it. Don't 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 beat him or don't like you know don't, don't try and beat him. So I did, but. I, I regretted it afterwards. Like, I mean, I, I I thought to myself, that ain't for me. That you know, I'd I'd like, like fixing, right? Well, you know, for the promoter, yeah, almost. And, and you know, I like I, I always thought that, oh yeah, well, I'll do that, and I will make some extra cash on the side. And you know, I know, I know, like people who know me know, you know, I'm not the best boxer in the world, but you know what I'm about. Really, I've beat some half decent lads, and I've been in with some others, and took some hard fights, but. And I was thought, oh yeah, I'll do that, and I'll still be respected. But I did it, and I thought, no, no, I could don't. Yeah, I, I couldn't and imagine was, you being that kind of no, enjoying that, like no, because I was a kind of, I was a more of an all, give it everything. Yeah, go there was, to win or go there to lose type thing. Like, like you're going there to give your all, and if you lose, you lose. Like yeah, you say yeah. to the better man. But, but you can argue, I think, not yeah, to go there knowing that you're going to lose. Yeah, and I think like you've been asked to exactly. Yeah, and I think you know people like worry about that loss and I think as long as you give a good account of yourself you put everything into it all your head up by you know like I always did like if I got beat by the better man and a good lad then well it is what it is you know yeah, like yeah. don't worry dust yourself off and go again Um. so yeah what yeah. creates someone like you so let's go back to mini Josh like to want to get punched in the face for a living uh, like where did that where did it come from <laughs> Well, I was always fat as a kid. So it basically started from, I started boxing when I was 14, going on 15. I was fat when I was a kid. Tried all loads of sports, never did any good at any of them, never lost any weight. Was pretty low about it, um, really low about it. And it affected me, like, kicking on as well uh, through, throughout my life, really. Uh, but, but yeah, so. And then my granddad used to box, he used to tell me his stories. And then tried a lot of sports wasn't couldn't get into them then i heard about boxing gym and then i went down to find this boxing gym with my mate and i was like right i found the place and it was shut and i was like well there was no, i was like well i don't know anyone there and it was back in what so i was 14 so it was like how old am i think it was, so it was 20 years ago 21 years ago the gym was shut it was an old boys club in in like in a state in town the gym was shut. There was no number on the phone. I didn't. Have, I was only a kid. I was like, right there, yeah, that's it. Dreams over. I like box it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to do now. So I was like, oh, oh well, okay, that's it then. So I come home, and then I went to school, and then some lads who was in my class said to me, "We're going boxing tonight," and I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, that's." R-. I was. I was thinking that's random. Um, I was like, "Where are you going?" And they said, and I said, "I want to come." So I jumped in the car with one of them, and four of us went down. And, you know, as it turned out, only one of them stuck at it. So I went down. As soon as I got in there, I was like, this is it. This is everything. Um, I remember the coach coming up to us because he'd come up he'd come up and he said, all right, lads, how are you doing? Uh, four young lads. Uh, what do you want to do? Are you coming down for a bit of training and just get fit? Or, you, or do you need to want to box? Soon I was like, I want to box. <laughs> just come out of my mouth straight away. And then um, he was like, all right, then. Probably didn't think too much about it. Little fat kid. No bother. But then I just I took to it. Um, like you know, I talked to it well. So what, what is it? What what is it that you like about it? Was it was you bullied because you were fat? No, no. Was it like I mean, a I was look ca- after was, yourself type thing. Yeah, I mean, I was called I was called names like. Um, <laughs> Snap, mate! I've been there. Oh, I know, <laughs> and and like they did affect me, like, but never bullied. Like, nah, I can I can never say I was bullied. Um, 
but I don't know what it was. Uh, like, what is it? What is it when you when you get in the ring? What or is it? Is it the prep? Is it the fight day? What what is, is it? The whole package? Honestly, I don't. Surely being punched in the head ain't enjoyable. Well, no, it isn't. But, I know the name of the game is to not get hit, but well, yeah, <laughs> but but I, and it isn't like getting it in the face isn't nice. Like, but I do I do enjoy it. Well, you know, being in there like it is good. Um, and I don't know what it is anymore. Is that I why just, you stepped away from it though? You don't know why? No, 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 no. I don't no. mean that way. I don't mean oh. like I don't know what it is. I'm I'm out. I mean like I don't know what it is that I love so much, but I just love it, and I always did love it. And uh, at first, did you love the camp and everything. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I did. I did love camp. I do. I did love camp. I did love everything, apart from losing weight. But even losing weight, I didn't mind at the time. Like you don't when you're doing it, you sort of think, oh, I can do this. This is all right. Do you think that's you've but seen when that, you step away, you're like, fuck, I can't believe I used to do that to myself. You've seen that quite a lot at the moment, like with this whole making weight. Like, do you think something needs to be done in all professional martial arts <laughs> fighting that people start fighting at their walking around weight, otherwise they shouldn't be fighting? Mm, I don't know. Um, have, you ever, have you ever seen when, when the when McGregor fought Aldo in that documentary? I know, yeah, he was a, like a skeleton, and he misses that to carry him. I know, yeah, and he still goes out and runs. I know, like, I know. Well, I mean, obviously... But then probably, you know full well he's going to put the weight back on for the next day. Yeah. <laughs> but see, I, I've listened to a lot of... And I've I've studied a lot into these and, like, poor... Like, through my boxing career and post-boxing career. And this is a lot of podcasts. This is a lot of people talk. And, like... I don't know. Like, you can you can get the weight off. Um, and, and, you know, they do... It's a horrible... You know, through it depends how you do it because I mean you can you can stay heavy throughout camp and just lose a bit of weight fat naturally because you should be in yeah, shape because yeah. you're a sportsman so you yes yeah, you should, an athlete full time not just yeah, for your eight week camp. Yeah, yeah yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't be you shouldn't be fat like you just shouldn't be um so you should be you should be not too far away and in good shape and then a week that last week take it off and the last kind of Day, two days, really take it off, take the water out. Yeah, mess around, and then and then put it back on, and then I think I don't like, and then but there's a science to it, and if you can get it on right, and then you're going well, and you come in strong. But I know it isn't good for you, but to then I don't know, maybe maybe we should walk around at our, we yeah, should fight not, at our, not not fighting at that weight. Uh, you walk, I think, but maybe just a sensible. It's the last couple of pounds you have to mess around with a week before, not the seven but, week but, camp. But, is but, always about weight loss. Not about the fight. Well, yeah, I mean that that shouldn't for that, everyone. But for every fight, even your professionals that are being paid sixty, seventy, yeah. eighty grand. But so, well, a fight. Yeah, I mean, my mine wasn't too much. I mean, I would be heavier, but it would come off, if you know what I mean. But I don't know. Maybe I think probably you should be not far away. Yeah, and and you sh- you should fight at a healthy weight, and you weight your weight you, as long as you're healthy. I think promoters ha- promoters should, should have a yeah have a, a duty of care to say, come on. Yeah, I mean, we're, if people are struggling to the scales and they're emaciated, and they're like skeletal, skeletal, then you, they, you, like that day, like that day be. when not many people know. Back in my time, I helped Josh, um, and we had a we had a few camps together, mm-hmm. and I was learning, he was learning. Yeah. And then we had one where his body just did what we did not expect. Yeah, and he crazy, dropped nearly a stone overnight. Overnight, yeah. Overnight, and I, a stone. And, and that wasn't even... It wasn't body fat, that, well, we know that, but... That wasn't even... I'm sure that was... That wasn't even before the weighing. I think... It was because you got... There and you look, and I was panicking because you looked... Oh, yeah, yeah. Death. And I was like, what's what? happened? And you said... Because you'd text me saying what you'd weighed in... And I was like, ah, that's not in the plan. Then I was like, yeah, well, I, I can't even give you anything just in case it bumps you over. Yeah, I know. And you I... look like, and I was like, I feel like I want, I nearly had a duty care. I say, Josh, you ain't fighting, mate. Yeah, I know. And uh, luckily that never won't come off. That one did come off. It, did yeah, it? that was a fight. Did. But you would have yeah. been, you'd, I think you'd have been fine the next day, but you've got some fighters that how do you know I how well? I don't know if I would. and I, But I don't know if any fighter ever does feel good the next day because for my... Uh, my title at Midlands, I had, I'd, I'd lost some weight. I got two and a half weeks notice, so I was a weight fighter, and I'd lost some weight, like, and that next day, I 
I've, I've never felt good going into the ring with a day before weighing. I've never felt good. But I don't know. I don't know if... Because no one will... Everyone keeps the clouds close to their chest. So no one will tell you. I was like, oh, yeah, you I feeling it? I feel great. And you're thinking, do you? Because I feel like shit. So what's... <laughs> well, like... No. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like I remember that morning, mate, coming to the weigh-in to meet you there and I'd got two litres of orange juice. I was like, bro, you're going to drink this when I get there. Oh, no, <laughs> and you were no. like, well, I was like, because I'm telling you, as soon as you weighed in, you're drinking this. Yeah. To get oh, it in. I know. And, and I, but I remember... Were you with me when I went to Ireland? That fight? Because... I out, uh, I out, but it was last minute, and I was away somewhere. Yeah, because I, I got it. I got four days, five days notice, yeah. and I dropped I did what I could. nearly a stone in it from the. I like I train. I remember got the call Monday. Right, all right, sound yeah. I'll take the fight. Monday night I trained. I weighed say, I don't know, ten, ten. Yeah. Tuesday I got up, ran, went to work. Come back, drank a lot of water. <laughs> drank, come back, went and trained again. Weighed in again. I weighed like nine, ten, nine, twelve in a day. I was like, "How the fuck have I just done that?" And that's like, what these people do: to losing and weight loss and stuff. They need to look at like when boxers are doing that. They're not losing. No, it's not. It's not fat. fat it's no. not bone density. It's weight. It's just, yeah, it's water, water, sugar, poo. So like when, so far away, like yeah. when we used to do it, I tried to come away from the war, and it was more or less empty your tract, wasn't it, and yeah, empty yeah. your stomach from all your feces yeah, and stuff yeah, to try yeah. and get the way out that way yeah. so it's safer yeah. so your brain is still got water in it mm. obviously your body just went nah and flushed yeah, it all out <laughs> so people so. who are losing weight need to they should look into that and we should maybe use fighters as an example like guys it's not that easy like they do lose this much weight but it's not that easy yeah like, and it's not good like it's not like, healthy you know no. i mean i could i it's the worst the worst i've ever felt is being that lean so like I think I put a photo on a while ago, and like it was like me and uh, Kelsey, a boxer, were both lean, and we, you know, it was like a memory. And I was like, both of us train hard. And felt like shit. Yeah, yeah, we were smiling, but there are, like, there's not, we, we are not happy. Like, I'm not a happy person here. <laughs> so I look, I look, you're like, you look great for a picture. Oh, look, Sam, yeah, yeah got a six pack, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking crying behind, <laughs> behind those, those sunglasses. Like, I hate myself. And everybody else around me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just think food, I just want to eat. Yeah, that's what, that's what people don't know. Like, like they see you winning pictures and like, yeah. yeah and yeah, then, think... obviously, some people control it after a fight. Some people don't. Yeah. Some people learn from what you've learned from losing weight. Yeah. And he's like, cool, well, I did this. I'm not going to do as much of that. I put a little bit back on. You get yeah. healthy. Some people just don't learn nothing and they go yeah. the complete other way. Um, which just like, which yeah isn't good because then your body really like you you stay leanish yeah, said, all year I said, round. I said yeah, I was trying to stay in shapeish because I was respected being a professional and it was I was always so happy to be a pro and that you know for instance I was a kid that's always what I wanted to do you know um so Ricky Atom was my hit one of my heroes when yeah. I was, when I was an amateur so I was like oh he's a professional I want to be a pro so when I did I I thought right I'll always try and give it everything I've got or what I can. Um, so I always tried to stay in shape, but yeah, like my weight would just go up. I mean, I don't know. You see lads in the like massive, and the ten stone. You think, fuck hell, you're absolutely massive. Like, but I used to box at ten stone as an amateur at sixteen years old. I mean, I know I was a kid, so I was sixteen, so I was boxing other kids, sixteen, seventeen, even, but eight, you know, eighteen, nineteen. So I'd been boxing some adults then, and I was like. 64 kilos, so I was like 10 stone, and I was boxing other, like, you know, adults at 10 stone, but they're not pro, so, so but, and I was doing, I'd do well, like, and I, and I was, I'd, you know, like, no now, what I'd know now, I'd be like, Chris, I'd be about 8 stone, if I know now, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, Pfft. yeah, but, you know, we walk around like a skeleton, but then I was just, like, young, didn't know anything, really, knew how to train, didn't know how to diet at all, I thought, I thought diet and so I used to eat a bowl of pasta before I, I went to so I, I'd work or I'd go to school obviously when I left school I'd work so I'd go, come back from school mum would make me a bowl of pasta have a bowl of pasta loads of water jump in the me coach come and pick me up jump in the car and then we go to a boxing show weighing <laughs> and then fight, full of pasta full of pasta probably lighter the next day yeah, probably lighter on fight day light, yeah lighter when I wake up um, <laughs> but like and then I think fuck it I used to do that how, how mental was that yeah, but yeah. like back then but you didn't have a care in the world you know you, a young amateur get in where you what am I I fucking I'm heavy I shouldn't have had that extra that's support. what I'm saying about the fighting at the, the right weight like when I when I work with you and I work with your friend Kelsey 
I was always just trying to, because I never understood the, the mindset of a boxer, which obviously I had to learn a lot, and I did learn a lot, and I had to switch how I thought about things. Yeah. But I was always just like, I want you to think about the fight. Yeah, not the way not in. Not the way in, which is not what, the pre-training. You, not were, the... you were really good for me at that, because obviously all boxers just about weight. So I didn't naturally, uh, whereas I probably didn't need to, really, and and probably could have till probably didn't need to tailor my training around it as much. I probably didn't need to do as many runs in the morning. I was like a kid though, like a kid, like you're saying, you literally didn't have no care in the world. It was like get me to fight day. Yeah, just, just, now you're an adult, you're pro. You think it should be even easier apart from fight day, and now it's not. Fight day is the not the, probably the easiest part yeah it's yeah. the eight weeks running up to it because you're worrying yeah. worrying worrying and obviously i know you have to have that vice versa of you have to have that warrior mindset because you're jumping in a ring to get punched yeah and that's something that kelsey taught me before i got to work with you which i thought was great and i'm glad he did it was i was massive on i don't want to exert your body and kill you so i would say let's stop some of these runs and yeah. some mornings he would say sam i need to run yeah. i've got to punish myself yeah, i'm fighting down. in a few weeks and i and that was something I had to understand. Yeah. Okay, actually, you're getting in a ring. You need to have some sort of, like, aggression, like, save yourself. Yeah. That switch in your mind that, what do we, we talk, not fight, it's like fight or flight, but what do we talk about? Like, the warrior type mindset. Yeah, like, you, you've got to know. It's, you've it's hard suffered to get to There's so much going. going out now about, like, sh- like um, science. And, like, you know, I think boxers generally overtrain or like probably sports people I think more boxers because with I think with like MMA the more accepting of um, new stuff concepts because it's a new and, and new sport as new such. sport and they, they'll you like they do strength and conditioning like, and all yeah, this all that yeah, yeah. And punching wrestling judo oh, <laughs> punching judo, the mic jiu-jitsu. that's Josh that can't, can't he's just throwing his fists about um, <laughs> I haven't done it for a while have I, sorry. <laughs> um, so I think because they've, they've done these different um, sports that you know they're open to new ideas yeah but I think boxing it's always been you're a boxer and then now the strength and conditions yeah, stop come, what are you doing what are you lifting sh- weights for yeah yeah, yeah. well I remember run uh, skip punch because I I turned professional in Australia um, and I remember training so I've always been like a, I've always enjoyed training and um, I used to do uh, circuits so I love, love my circuits love, love doing my strength and I remember doing a circuit in the gym and I was swinging a kettlebell doing some pull-ups, press-ups, you know, some exercises. And I remember one of the pros said to me, what are we, fucking MMA fighters? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't fuck. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, but it, now it's in, like you... But now, yeah, now, now it's, they're probably... Now like, they're every, all doing it, well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And all that is, it's just trying to keep the, the strain off. Like, I always knew with you, like, same again. You punch so much pre-camp or to, in camp, your arms would hurt on oh. fight day. Everything hurt. Uh, I, I remember, I remember as an an amateur and then this is going back years and I used to get ten bad tendons then and I remember um I was I had a fight that night and I checked my weight so I was I was a bit careful my weight was a bit up so I had too much pasta. Um <laughs> and uh so I checked my weight and I took my top off or to get changed before the fight. I took my top off my arm went and I was like fuck and it was an amateur boxer I was like oh my god um, and I couldn't pick my arm up. I remember like going to weigh in. I was boxing someone from the army. No, I weighed in, and I was like, "So this is my coach." I was like, "I can't fucking move my arm." And then I was like, whinging about it, like, "Oh my arm!" And he's like, "Are you gonna fucking box or not?" And I was like, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> I'll settle down and then I boxed and yeah so but obviously what we say like the strength and conditioning takes away from that because you're still doing all the movements you're doing the explosiveness yeah. you're doing the, the, the mobility not as stiff etc but you're not doing that consistent repetitive yeah, punching yeah, punching yeah. punching and I, I know and I think I mean I've listened to a lot of things about like naysayers on strength and conditioning and pro strength and conditioning and, and I I believe in it but then a part of me is like, oh, but do you do like? I think you do. Just gotta mix it up. You just gotta, you just gotta mix it up. I think you just gotta, yeah, it's gotta know how much. And I think a lot of people do too much, where that's all they'll do. Yeah, like, like with the running and stuff. I started to like, okay, the running is actually because they're gonna go into three rounds, five rounds. That's why they gotta run because they gotta yeah. know they're gonna have the legs in five rounds time, not just how fit they are mentally yeah, so, or whatever. See, I think what you shouldn't do as much. Um, not do the runs in the morning like yeah, weight yeah. off runs do your runs so you do your intervals 
simulate your rounds, your intervals, your sprints, long runs like early on endurance and then intervals and then go down to the sprints, like periodize yeah, those yeah. runs. Yeah. And because I, I think your weight should come off anyway. Your weight should come off for your diet. And at the end, it is what it is, water manipulation. You know, that that that's going to be given. It is the sport. So yeah. there's no point trying to say oh, we shouldn't do that because everyone does that. Yeah. So you may as well factor it in because it's yeah. got to be factored in. So I think... The the what the the weight will come off from them runs anyway, but do those runs as like the periodized runs through the camp? Um, you, sorry, Josh keeps punching everything. Sorry, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done it for a while. <laughs> I had a bottle past no. me. <laughs> he's ready to go. <laughs> ready he's gonna, to he's gonna get on the scales in a minute and um, punch me. I'm too scared of them <laughs> scales now. Like, um, but yes, and I think take the weight off through the diet, training, and then. And then the water, uh, but like yeah. I said though, like with the running, like when when he said that to me, I then understood it. Like, okay, I get but, that. Yeah. Like you can't be a soft fairy have, jumping in the ring. Yeah, like. you've got to have that warrior mindset. You got so, to know that you've got up in the piss and dark. <laughs> you've got them runs done. You, you hated it. it. Was horrible. now I'm ready to kick the dude's head in and next now, to me. And and does that, take, take do you think out? that comes in with the whole the making weight too suffering? Yeah, because because I remember um, like if you get there and you you're okay weight you. You're naturally just lethargic. You haven't run because you're like, yeah, I'm fit enough. You yeah. jump in the ring. Are you really ready to yeah, no, well, defend yourself? I think <laughs> would, that would then depend on what kind of boxer you were. If you were flashy, supremely confident, then it depends on it depends on you and your opponent then. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it comes down to the fight. But I think it's, it's good having that warrior, I've suffered, now you're going <laughs> to... Because because yeah, I've suffered for eight weeks. Fucking got ready for you. <laughs> Twat. You know what I mean? Does boxing affect your mentality outside of boxing? Oh, yeah, I'm a psycho. Like, <laughs> um, I, I think no, because like I know I've spoke to some people. Naturally, I know some people who are just don't boxers. They just naturally want to fight, and then yeah. it's hard See, to I don't think that. boxers or do. Or a boxer, like yeah, like do you find it's hard to keep your hands under control? Nah. Like but, when you're in the street and someone. Kicks off at your missus or your mum or your little. Well, and... obviously, if that, then someone's fucking get me. Do, I... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I think, I think. Is it hard for you not to tell yourself like you're not, a, you're not a because you're basically a weapon, right? That's why you have a pro card. Um, well, aren't you? Ca- aren't you? If you hit someone when you're, like, if I hit someone, I'm cool. But if you're a professional boxer, you're actually see... classed as a weapon. Well, I don't know. Maybe you've like got, I'm a weapon because you've like, trained like, to mm. get. <laughs> That's your accent, right? Yeah, it's my accent. Because you, you, you sound like because you, because you've trained to to hurt someone, whereas I haven't. Well, I mean, you know, you can hurt I d- someone. I don't even know if that's true. I mean, I would imagine. Oh shit! Sorry, <laughs> keeps punching. I would Come imagine. Ears, guys. I would imagine if you did do something bad and it went to court. And then they find out you're a box. Well, then you do your boxer. Then yeah. I would imagine they're gonna come down. Do you find it hard though? Like, I like like me. I know I'm not handy with my hands. I've been looked after a few times by friends, so I know I'm cool. I wouldn't just throw a punch in the street where you no. know you can use well, your hands. So no. it, is it hard for you to control that? No, no, not at all. Like, because, I, I mean, I don't like... like Fighting? Nah. Which is quite weird. <laughs> yeah, cool. I just, I, cause I, I just think, why? Like, what, why yeah. would you do that? And, like, you know, you know the damage you can do because you think, well, I'm thinking, well, I've spat... I'm a, know, I'm a weapon. I know I can hurt you, mate. You're lucky, bro. <laughs> no, I think, well, I, I know that I can, you, like, say like a bag, right? You've got a punch bag. Yeah. And you've got a big, I, I train in 16 ounces generally. So I've got the spit, the 16 ounce, and I know when I eat that bag, hey, I can eat it pretty fucking hard. And I know, like, the, the noise that it makes. So I'm like, well, that's hard. And if I, I think, so take them glove off, take your bandage off, and then just eat somebody in the head with, the, I think that's going to fucking hurt. Like, yeah. And, and so I just, I don't, like, I just don't see It's a very sensible approach and a very controlled mindset, which I know you've got. But I think a lot of boxers do because you've got to be controlled because you can't. I was about to say, do you think that's helped with your success? Well, yeah. Yeah, but I think every boxer's got that. Well, obviously some don't. But I think a lot of boxers do because if you swing for the ills, then you're generally going to lose your fight. You're yeah. going to lose. I mean, some don't, but... You know, if a control boxer eight, nine times out of ten will always generally win be, a, be a scrappy. Yeah, because yeah. they're more calculated. I mean, some won't because they get overpowered. But, 
you know, you've got to use your brain in boxing. Yeah, I've seen it. We keep talking about Kelsey, but I'm gonna hopefully what what, listens to this. Like, I've seen him hit a few people, and I'm like, how are you so calm? Like, there's just so so much going on. I'm not even in the fight, and I'm like, ah. And And you can see him just calculate things are happening. And then bosh. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, I think think it's because as well. Obviously, you know what you're doing. Do you see it in slow motion? Do you yeah, see it's, it like, it's like it's like the matrix. Yeah, like, you see it. You see it. You know what's happening. You, oh, I've just been hit, but now that's what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I think I think obviously you know, like you know what you're doing, and like obviously boxers, are, you know, generally accurate. Yeah. So you know, like if I want to, I'll, I'll leave you there just on the chin there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, and I, so I think that probably, and because there've been a lot of fight scenarios, obviously everything that you train for is a fight you train for a fight and you spar and you shadow boxing you visualize fighting you punch on the bags it's all geared around fighting so if you're in a fight scenario even when it's quite hectic you you're like all right well there's his chin so <laughs> nine, nine, nine. <laughs> it's, nine times out of ten you're gonna get it yeah i'm yeah. probably gonna catch that yeah <laughs> but but then yeah but no i i mean i don't i i i don't like it i mean you can lose your temper i mean fucking hell, we've all lost our temper yeah yeah but um, I think that's more of a human thing than yeah, it's you know, the natural. Than a, yeah, just a natural thing. But no, not not fighting isn't isn't for me. Like, so being a professional boxer, obviously there's the 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 good side to it, the limelight, the lights, the winning, yeah. the trophies. You won uh, a national title, right? Yeah, uh, I you won. Re- retired as a. Well, yeah. I mean, I won. So I won a. I boxed for a, a challenge. One of those challenge belts, a, a British challenge belt. It's like the first belt. First rung on the ladder kind of thing. Um, so I beat an unbe- I boxed away again. Beat an unbeaten kid there. Boxed an unbeaten kid on his show. Stopped him. Well, he, he kind of pulled him out, but yeah, beat, beat him. And then I got two and a half weeks notice for the Midlands area, so area champion. And then uh, won that as well, yeah. Away, so that was good. So the limelight, the, the having the bringing the belt back to the little one and having the belt and yeah. enjoying life after that and being a champ. What about the dark side to boxing? Oh, there's a lot of dark side to boxing. So even though you are a professional and people... Well, I've never seen you on TV, so how are you? You are. Mm. You are just the same professional boxer as the people we see on the TV. Yeah. Joshua, yeah. people 100%. like that. You go through the same medicals. You have to have the same licenses, yeah. the same eye checks. I know you have to have eye yeah. checks, don't eye you? Test, yeah. uh, medical checks. Um, what else do you have to have? Just your license. Bloods, uh, brain scan, license, eyes... Yeah, blood brain scan license. You just eyes. yet to break into the and that yeah the, the, so, the so money. That's about, so that's about I think that's about a grand. That's about a thousand pounds. So hopefully you can get a sponsor to sort that out. Otherwise, obviously that's a grand out of your pocket. And then that's why a lot of lads go on the road because they'll get they'll obviously they'll pay for that. But then if they make a grand a fight, then yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. But for, so for the dark side of well, for the side of boxing, you got to pay. You can do your medicals, and then. You've got to look to get a fight, and then so. So before you've even jumped in the ring, you're fifteen hundred quid down. You're a, yeah, you're a grand down a day's. And a you're a professional day's, boxer. A day's money at work. But you're not being paid. Yeah. So and then and then yeah. So then you've got to get a fight, and then if your boxer's a home boxer, which is a few of mine were 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 on in the home corner. Yeah. Um, you got to sell tickets, so you got to sell roughly a hundred. But you have to sell those yourself. I've got to sell them a hundred tickets. To get paid, so you got to pay for the your opponent. You got to pay your opponent's wages, um, pay to you know to be pay the, the sanction fees, pay your opponent, and then your manager gets some, your the promoter gets or your manager, your coach gets some, and then you get paid. But it's like if you don't sell a hundred, then you say if you say less than a hundred, then you might just cover your um opponent and then it's up to the discretion of your manager to be like right well well i've got nothing but you like my manager was all right was sound so if i didn't make much you know if i didn't sell much then I, as long as i paid for the opponent he'd be like don't worry about it we'll just get you on and then usually i had coaches that were all right about it so then they get 12 and a half percent as well so um, what would you get like, maximum Minimum out of a fight, like it depends. So I think a four rounder you would get maybe nine hundred quid. Or would you get nine hundred quid? It depends on much you've sold. I mean, I've took, I've took, I've done eight week camp, took a nearly a week off, 
and come out with about 400 quid. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got Just... punched in the head. I won't lie. <laughs> The first so 400 quid but you've already spent 1500 quid on all your licenses and Got stuff license, yeah. you might have had a sponsor to pay for some of that so you're lucky that's wiped off yeah but then it's cost you you've got 400 quid back from the fight but you've had a week off work which yeah, is 400 really, quid yeah you've got your supplements so you've got you know you've got to keep your on camp top, got to, yeah you got to keep on top of your supplements your gym membership your gym camp gym membership yeah you're out running your food um your food you travel so to the gym nothing really you've paid healthy to fight. food so it's not like you can so use you've paid for shit. fight really yeah so you've paid for, yeah yeah so you've just paid to, to get and this is the bit people don't see because obviously when they come and watch you it's a great night it is a great night when we've gone and had a few at like the villa ground and stuff yeah, cracking yeah. night you've paid 60 quid you get your food you get this great night of boxing you win it's great but no one sees everything else you've done the eight week camp yeah. you've been worrying about weight yeah, you've so been you've worrying about from, the fight done, to worry so about money yeah the start of the eight week you're, you're fat end of eight weeks you're a stick insect you've hated life all the way through eight, through the eight weeks especially the last week two weeks You've had to sell tickets. You've had to sell tickets. Everyone's let you down. So you 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 know you put out right on boxing. Um, here here yeah. You promo and you sell like mad. And I wasn't a, you know I did it, but I wasn't. I'm not a great the greatest fan with that. Um, so you know push yourself out there. I'm trying. Like, everyone's like right yeah I want tickets. I love it. Great stuff. And then next minute everyone's deleted you off Facebook. You got no friends anymore. No one wants a fucking ticket. <laughs> You've sold. He's. Johnny's going to buy 10 off you. Yeah, next minute, he doesn't want 10. He only wants two. And then when he comes down, he really can't go. All right, sounds good. Well Thank you very much. Another one, I'll have 10. I'll have 10. Great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. I don't like you anymore. Well. So, and then it goes like that. And then you're you know, left with nothing but disappointment at the end. You take your tickets to your manager and you're like, oh, I've only sold this. And they look at you like, wow. Oh. Yeah, you know what I mean, and and then yeah, yeah so you become like, a salesman and so a just, weight maker than an actual boxer. I can see that probably messes with a but a lot of boxers head oh, once they get in the ring. Yeah, it's stressful. It's like stand there and think, I didn't sell tickets. I'm only getting four hundred well, quid. Yeah, I've I mean, only just made weight. I'm about to die. I, I, oh, I'll, now I need to learn to box because I haven't thought about boxing for the last eight weeks because yeah. I thought about it's being a salesman weight maker. I know, but <laughs> I think well, it depends how you how you do it. But I think once you get in the ring. Everything else. Goes Can you see that's why people go away though to fight? Because you haven't got to think about paying. Oh, yeah. yet. Well, you just turn I, up and get paid. That's what I did. Not, but not just to get paid. Was to, because because I couldn't sell as many tickets. You know, some lads will sell hundreds. So you moved into your village but, but from yeah, out of the village, I, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I moved here. Um, obviously, I turned pro in Australia. Come back here and then moved here and then obviously then I've got to try and campaign. This is my home. Um, and then so then yeah but you haven't been here long <laughs> I haven't been here long and then trying to sell tickets to people that I don't really know is, is hard work so that yeah. I would, so I would, but, but my kind of mindset was always I would just take fights whenever a fight come up yeah sound like I love that because that's what I did as an amateur anyway because we're, I'm from Cumbria originally um, so there's not that much boxing there's more now but the, the, there's not that much boxing so I think out of my, I had 58 amateur fights. I think I'd only boxed on actual home shows, eight. So I think like 50 fights had been away. Um, and I think my first fight, uh, I boxed a kid on his home show away for my first couple of fights. I was like, so that was just kind of set out from the start. Do you know what I mean? That's what I was doing. I, I'd always, I'd always just box away. Yeah, well, you, was, yeah. You, you boxed in Cumbria. You boxed in Australia. You also boxed in China, right? China was yeah. that when you were in this country or from Australia to China? Australia, so yeah, I boxed in, boxed all around this country. I boxed in Denmark a few times, um, as an amateur. Went to Australia, had a couple of amateur fights to keep my hand in. Then I turned pro, had three in Oz, and then I was I, my my best mate Darren, does he was boxing and I was doing his corner, and then after he 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 beat this kid. And then after he'd won, I got talking to um, a boxing trainer from the Gold Coast. And I says, oh, what's going on? How's it going? And then he said, oh, we're maybe going out to um, to China and next year. I was like, oh, yeah, who, who? I'll, go, I'll go. I said, I'll fight anyone super featherweight. Like, wait, just give, give me a fight. I'd love to do that. So he was like, all right, then. I said, honest. I said, try, try and get me, try and just get me out. And then he was like, oh, well, I'll see what the crack is. Speak to Brendan, my old manager and trainer in Oz. And then... Uh, come back for Christmas, I'm a little girl, come back for Christmas, and then got a phone call um, randomly in December, my manager from out there saying, right, do you want to fight then, or what? And I was like, yeah, who with? And he said, oh, out in China, uh, Kanzu, um, February, 
February, summer, uh, 20th February or whatever. I was like, yep, spot on. And then flew back January 5th and then sort of started work because I was working, started back work and then started camp and then flew up to China, yeah, which is a mad, mad little I was about to say, that was another dark side of boxing too, right? Like, yeah, you were traveling and the experience was great. Yeah, the fight yeah, was, was good. good. Yeah, it was good, but Mech and White <laughs> there was horrific, like, because I knew less then as well, like that, like, about Mech and White till we flew. And my weight was pretty good. I trained hard, like I trained bloody hard for that fight because I knew, I knew it was like being a win in the way corner anyway. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, I'm going to China, Christ. Um, you know what I mean? It's going to be hard getting a decision over there. Um, So I, I really did put it in. And then my weight was pretty good. And then it's a 14 hour flight, I think, from us to China. <laughs> Got there. And then I, I think we, got, we were there for four days. So I pretty much just stopped eating carbs. And then just drank. Just depleted yourself. Just, yeah, just fuck bad. <laughs> Bull pass didn't come anywhere near my lips. Like, um, so I just, I just drinking water. I was having these little coffees. This, this coffee was unbelievable in this hotel. I was having these little coffees, drinking water, and then just eating bits of, of like bit, a little bit of fish and then some veg, and that was it. And then I was just, we could. There was a gym that they were using, but we didn't really go in the gym. So we go, we box in these big, um. Like a, a stadium, uh, so we go up to the stadium. I put my sweat to sweat gear on, do a bit of pads, do a bit of running around. But honestly, from the flight over, and then the no eating carbs, I was I was done in. I would get I a bet, couple, yeah. couple of rounds on the pads. You actually get water retention from flying, which obviously you would have known now. You're yeah, playing yeah. that now, but you get water retention well, just from flying. You're yeah, meant to I'd, cane the water when you're on a plane. Yeah, and I, I knew that, but I didn't know about having to cane the water. I just thought I'd be heavier when I got there, yeah, yeah. and I was. Um, so then I just like I don't even really know if we had skills I think we might have got access to some skills then you have to jump in a sauna oh, and towels well, or whatever the, and... the, the, so the day before the, so the day before the weighing we went to find a sauna and we found a, a bathhouse and um, we went in there and there was me another boxer trainer and cutsman and um, it was like a proper bathhouse you've got to be Bullet naked, like, <laughs> and uh, the the Chinese fellow coming, we we're getting changed. He's like, right, this is bathhouse, and um, oh, sorry, that was my uh, Chinese accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no offense, no offense intended. Um, and then the so I do. If you watch the last podcast, we had all sorts of accents oh, going well, on. We couldn't even say Khabib's name. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing well now. Yeah. Um. So the Aussie lad come out, and he had a pair of shorts on, and um, he was like, no, no, no. So you. No shots, and he's like, "What? Uh, I'm not fucking. I'm not going naked like." And he's like, "No, no, you can't, I can't." And then so I stripped off, and I was like, "Right, spot on." <laughs> Grab, grabbed his hand, I'm like, "Come on!" And he's like, "Do you want a towel?" I was like, "No, I'll leave you towel." So it was like I was having a laugh, but then when we got in there, uh, and I did a bit of sweating all that night, went back to the hotel, took it easy. I think maybe did probably did another little session, drank a little bit of water. Then we went there in the morning, and then I just had the worst experience of my life. Uh, I was in this sauna and it was so hot I couldn't open my eyes, you know, like yeah, yeah. Oh, I was disgusting. And then I'd be in there for a bit. And then my co- uh, coach would pull me out, lather me up with soap to open up my pores, shove me back in, and I was doing that for ages. <sighs> and then I was like coming out and just sat on the side of like the pool, just like wanting to die. And he was like, "Get it yourself back in there a bit more." And then I get in there, get a bit more come out and I couldn't walk back we had to get a taxi back and then went back to the hotel got in bed it got everyone's covers on top of me and just laid in bed until they showered us for the weigh-in walked down luckily we were first on the scales jumped on the scales fucking great stuff in front of <laughs> uh, Kanzu he's, he's there in my face I'm like fuck off mate I, don't, I, just, I just want to eat you yeah. I don't even care um, and then went away yeah, and then, was he a big I, fighter in China? He, I think he was, he was kind of up and coming. Obviously, we, they probably didn't know what he would do, is because he, he's got a world title now. And Has he? Yeah, yeah. That's and sick. He, he's, I think he's the WBA regular champion. So they run about him possibly fighting Josh Warrington. Ah. Um, to you, I don't know if to unify the belt or what, but but yeah, that, that, I think they've tried to make that fight. So I'm not sure if it is happening. But That's sick. I know. Yeah, it, it's mad. Like like to think know, what yeah, yeah, yeah you've yeah. been back and then now where they are. Like. I know. Yeah, I know. And um. And then yeah, so I, but then on the day I felt good, 
you think? I think, well, I think, <laughs> I, I mean, I felt it. Yeah. I remember chatterboxing, thinking, I feel good here. Like, this kid's getting beat. I, I, I feel good, like. Because uh, I remember their uh, corner men with all their team were coming into our changing room and uh, watching us get ready. So I started chatterboxing in Southport and I was messing around. Um, and I just felt good, like I felt loose. I was, I was moving, my footwork's moving good. And then I remember, um, we, they did like, because we were the first on. It was like a big show, and um, they had like the you all know, the dragons and that walking was in. Yeah. And uh, we were both stood, like his chain room was there, I was were there, and there was this like like middle ground where we were getting ready to go in. And I was making loads of noise, and I was—I think I was doing his head in because he—he had to go back into that chin. But I thought I'm just gonna wind him up, like, and I'm just gonna—I'm just gonna unsettle him here. And I was—I was shouting, I was—I was making all. I was, I was good. And then we had a good fight. You know, it was a good, it was a good fight. I like uh, quite a lot of people there thought I won. Uh, he got it by one point. Oh. So I think. You Could know, be you fighting Josh Warrington. I know, yeah. Could we just barely be Josh, Josh Warrington just for that point? Josh, just, we we need to get it on. Just for that point. We need to get it on. <laughs> do you think, though, if you'd had... Like, so that was back in the day. Like, do you think if you'd had, in, the, in your recent fights, without the work, it would have been so much better? Because whenever I worked with, I think, two of you, it was getting you through work, not through the oh, camp. No. It was getting well, you through work working, and the I was, camp. I was working then. I was oh, working. Okay. I was working 10 hour days in, in 40 degree heat. But I was a bit younger. And, and personally, I was thinking about this the other day. And we've really didn't touch on this in the last podcast, but I think have like when I turned pro, I was like twenty eight, so I was quite old. But I was I was ha- I was high on life because I was in Australia. I was buzzing. Yeah, I just turned professional. I you know a little girl was just born. I you know I was in the sun. I I turned pro. I was with my best mate from back home. We were both in the same gym. Michael Katsidis was in the gym, you know, like someone that I looked up to, where that I watched on Sky Sports. He was in the gym with us, and I was buzzing. I was just, I was, I was buzzing every day. I was because I was a new, young, yeah, new yeah. professional, and I think we've leaving us, and then coming back, restarting here, going to work in England again. I think that started to put me on the That's slide. That's where it you. I think that I think I started to. I think I think. I started going on the slide then, and then getting a house here, mortgage, bills, stress, pressure, stuff privately with little girl, yeah. um, you know, but and just generally being around here where I didn't know anyone yeah. really, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know anyone. Um, I think that put me on the slide. To be honest, I think a lot of external pressures started to make started to make my body tired. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not and I the think, boxing. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it was necessarily about... Because... Cause and maybe just getting a bit older as well, but I just couldn't move the way I used to be yeah. able to move. And, but I could always see things. I could see everything, but just couldn't... couldn't. Dude. I was like, oh, I just can't, I can't get there. Why can't I fucking get there? <laughs> oh, shit, he's hit me. So, <laughs> too late. <laughs> you know what I mean? So why why the decision to, to step back from competing? I think, I think there's just a time... I think sometimes you just know, and I, and you know what I mean. Um, I toyed with it a lot. I mean, I remember I was boxing out of a gym in Birmingham, Sean Corgan's gym, um, in Birmingham, and I was working. So I was I was working in Coventry. So I probably shouldn't have been training twice a day. But my mindset was like, a, I'm a professional boxer. I need to train twice a day. Yeah. So every day I was training twice a day. So I get up early, drive to Coventry where I was working. So I take about. 30, 35 minutes at that time in the morning. Uh, Training in the gym, run, strength and conditions, all that, sprints. Then work 10 hours on site. Then drive nearly an hour to Birmingham. Train again. And then drive home another 20 minutes, half an hour. And then two hours in the gym. An hour and a half, two hours in the gym. Hard. And I do that every day. Then get home on my own. Cook, clean, prepare food for the next day. You know, going home alone. Yeah, you know, by myself. Think you know, like I th- and and I remember thinking then, oh, it's I, taking I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I can keep doing this. And I speak to Daz, and then we and I'd be like, oh, I think I'm on the side. I think I'm going to jack it in. 
and then we'd chat and he's like oh well you know you've had a good career anyway I, like you know congratulations good career. but then we talk about boxing and i'm like oh, fuck, i love you i'm not really equipped what am i talking about um so then you know i left i thanked sean and left him but it was just a simple fact as i can't keep doing this because i'm going to the well every day just to just to i remember you used to pull up outside the gym and the the, the gym is up the stairs yeah and i used to have and i was going to the well just to make it up them stairs every day and i was like wow oh, hate this so then i moved to gym in coventry uh, red corner gym glenn's gym and that and that gave me a bit of a new lease of life um and, but i still i still think just with the way things were taking fights on the road and things not coming was off. there a point like was you in the in the ring at one point and just like was, no. it that, was it the journeyman fight I think just you thought you know what if I'm taking German fights then yeah I think I think I kind of knew done. that was going to be my last one anyway because my my license was coming up so then I have to pay another grand again and then like my my missus now we're we're wanting to you know we're we're, we're we're bought a new house and and you know my little girl's getting older and I thought no one's I'm not getting any younger my little yeah. girls are getting any younger you know what me and my missus want a family we want to move. You know, all these other external things that don't matter as much when you're right, you are a bit younger. Yeah. Then start, start to, to take matter. over, and, and then they take, they start replacing the boxing, and instead of you thinking, oh, I'm not bothered, I'm just, tri- I'm, I start thinking, oh, I've got to get home. I've, I said to the missus, I get back. Whereas before know, it was an interview. Before gym. you'd be like, I'm not bothered, I'm training. Yeah. And I think, I think then you're like, right, you know, it is, it's, it's kind of time, it's human's man's game at the end of the day. Well, it isn't always human's man's game, but. Generally, I think the only time you can get away with that, and we're seeing it a lot. I'm sorry, we're seeing it a lot in the, the heavyweight division at the moment. Is if you're being paid a lot of money, you can keep just doing that. If you're getting paid a lot of money, you know, you can like Chisora. I'm sorry, it's t- yeah, if you get, if you get paid, <laughs> he's just turning up to get paid a lot of money because well, David Hay can sell a fight and get him a fight, yeah. But and he, he still went, I mean, did he got 12 rounds, he did he still went 12 he, rounds, he didn't get stopped. So, so he, he just he, keeps getting beat though, doesn't he? Um, well, I know, but he beat, um. It'd be Takam, didn't he? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, he, you know, he, and and you know, if he lands a right shot and he still loves it and he's getting paid, I feel like then, if he was you, oh, would he, he have gone? Ah, you know, my family's more important. Well, is it the money? Does that what talks like? Well, yeah, but it, it, it's it's your, your money, your quality of life. Yeah. You know what what's what's out your reach? What's in your reach? You know, and if if you're not get, if you've not got big sponsors, you're not making massive purses. You haven't got a big promoter you've got to work you've got to pay your bills it's hard and and you know like and and you can i think like there's you've only can do that for so long yeah and then and if you've got no one around you you haven't got that support network you know i can't go around to my mum's for for dinner because i'd be on the road for three and a half hours yeah do you know what i mean so i think i think it's it's about, it's about your circumstances you know like and if you've got that and, and the money helps, you know, that's a big driving factor. You know, if you're getting big money for the next fight, you're like, Sam, I can have a few weeks off work or yeah. I maybe don't have to work. But then if you don't have to work, you can rest. So that promotes long, longevity in your career because you're resting. Whereas I could never do that because I always, I mean, I've, I won that title on the fri- on the Saturday. I didn't work Monday. So I had a new job. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Back to reality. So turn up to the site, all right, lads? Yeah. Black eye, uh, boxy yeah. video. You know what I mean? <laughs> who's there? Who's that dude yeah, think he is? Yeah, yeah. I've got a belt. I've got a belt. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all great with me. <laughs> <laughs> Still wrapped around. Ball pass from me, man. Walking onto, walking onto set. Like. Yeah. Everyone's like, fuck oh, off. Like, dude, it's a construction site, mate. Not a film set. I know, so, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. It's the like comeback down of Cloud Nine. I know, yeah, I know. So, what now? Um, you teaching? Do you want to teach? You just coming away from boxing and just enjoying it as a fan and watching? Or? Yeah, I mean, I've I've stepped away. If, I've I've always trained. I'll always train. Um, I mean, you, if anyone follows me on social media, you'll see that I'm, I'm always in the gym. Um, and I and I still like to go on a boxing and and doing some, you know, hitting the bag. But I haven't done anything else. I would like to coach, but I am gonna. We are in the process of moving, so then it would be find a gym local to me. Um. But I know what commitment it takes because I know what commitment it is to be yeah, a boxer, yeah. and and I would like to. I don't know if I'd like to work with pros, but even that, like, it's so much. And I would, I would like, I kind of like to work with amateurs, but you need to give a lot there. You know, then you give up your weekends because yeah, yeah. of the boxing, and you got to make sure they do. And I'd, I'd want, a, I'd want a full time coach, and I'd want to be a full time coach because that's what I expected back. Yeah. Because, because I think if you call yourself a coach. 
then there's an unwritten agreement that you've that you should have signed and it's yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. given that box or everything because yeah. it because I always thought well if I'm given everything and I am then you should give that to me whether I'm I can pay in your honour because if you want to be a boxing coach then you should want to be the best boxing coach and if you want to be the best boxing coach that should mean you can give me everything so I can be the best boxer and uh, you know what I mean so I think I would like to but it's a, you know a time commitment thing yeah you know, you've I've made a decision you've I've, made a decision yeah at the I've got a family and, and you know I, I've my missus like we she, like she just met me and I was I think I was in a fight with you and I remember it was quite early on and, and you did a check out with me I don't know if you remember doing that at the gym. Remember that check weight early, yeah, 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 early yeah, morning? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. So it was like first few, yeah. I think first date, we went out for a drink. Yeah. Second date, I think the second date, yeah, second date we did. And the third date, I was like, I'm not drinking. Yeah. That's it. That, that second date, that was our last drink. <laughs> you can't drink. Well, you can, but I can't. Yeah. And I'm going to be She's like, oh, should we have some of the tweet? And I was like, fuck off, I can't eat that. Yeah. Talking about what you're doing is what we're doing at eight o'clock. We're going to the gym for yeah, a way. Yeah, we're, we're going, we're going <laughs> and then I get told what we can eat. We're up at six. No, then I'll know what we can eat. <laughs> yeah, then we'll go for a run. And we'll yeah, go, it consumes your life. And All right, yeah, and and I think she, you know they, you know, she's missed out on that, and you know, I'm the little, I'm a little girl, and and you know, get to the point where you're like, ah, that's important. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, you know, when I met But what you've done for her, she's old enough to remember what you've done and she will see that and you'll be able to remind her that in a long time. Do you remember when daddy used to go out at six in the morning or yeah, when you didn't yeah. see daddy for so long or when daddy was drained and blah? That's because he was going for this belt. That's success. Well, I, I, I and remember. she'll see that like, that's what I have to do to succeed. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, so you can push that on them. Like, she'll, she'll if you remember want something, that. If you want something, then you've got to work hard. She'll remember that. Do you remember I when know, Daddy was... I know you've yeah, got to work hard. When you were asking for me or you hadn't seen me for this long, yeah. it's because I was going to win this. I think it, before my first title fight, I so I was weighing in on the Friday, yeah, weighing in on the Friday, but I, I bet her on a Thursday night. <laughs> on a Thursday, I couldn't pick her up. <laughs> she's, only, she's only been three. Three, I would say. And and she was like, oh, daddy, you know, I will pick her up, carry her, do everything. I pick her up, and I, I was like, picked her up, and I had to sit down. I was just, like, I've got to sit down for a second, so yeah, just hold on. See, it's nice. And it's, and you're about to get in a ring even, and fight someone, like. But then, but then I felt, but it's, I weighed in that day. I put on over a stone, so I weighed in Friday at nine stone three. Yeah, you were used to fire that, yeah. And a bit, and then I weighed in the next day at like 10 and a half stone yeah. and yeah I think I was believing felt great. <laughs> well I don't know if I did again <laughs> I did up, I did know. you will never know I, know, I, know. I remember because I remember for that fight again I was in the chain, the away chain room and you know the journeyman's got a certain banner and it's like get in there how'd you get on have a laugh yeah, and everyone's yeah. having a laugh you're not really warming up you're just like in the pads and you're like ah, oh, okay. no one cares but I enjoy that I enjoy that crack because no one's taking anything too seriously, seriously yeah. and I like that because it's good crack you know yeah. what I mean um, but I remember being in that change room and I was in that away change room and there's a few lads kind of having that like oh you know just having the crack having the laugh and my and like everyone was kind of joining in, and then I was, and then I was like, "Hang on a minute, I'm boxing for the, my first title <laughs> in like twenty minutes." And I said to my coach, "Right, we need to switch on now." That like, and I stopped talking, I stopped having a laugh, yeah, and got got my head on, and then and then obviously yeah, went out and boxing won. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I can't remember where we were going with that, but I just went off on. No, it's right fine. Thing. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up there, man. Yeah, congratulations on. Like, yeah, people don't know you on Sky Sports, this, that, the other, but congratulations on a pretty, like, successful Thank you. career. Thank really appreciate that. Um, congratulations for taking the the decision to step back for better reasons. Yeah. And I hope to see you give your experience in the future. Thank you. Because I'm at that point now where I'm giving back. Yeah, good, eh? Yeah, Not just as brilliant. old as you, but I'm giving, I'm giving back. From yeah. from competing, I was like, you know what, I'm ready to to give back what I've learned. And then you could pass on your knowledge now and your experiences and yeah. and where you've been with the world, and you can say, look at this, and you know, like sacrifice, and and even like bits from what you've done with me, you know that kind of yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. Say, oh, I know, I know. Oh, I learned from everything. Learn yeah, from everything. yeah, yeah. So yeah, brilliant. So yeah, congratulations on your career. Congratulations on enjoying family life. Enjoy. I hope the move goes well. Thank you. Um, and don't be a stranger. Uh, yeah, we'll have you back you. on yeah, and like I say enjoy this time off just be a fan 
yeah, be a boxing yeah. fan. Yeah, that's it. Uh, a critical uh, fan. Drink, a critical drink, fan. watch it, chill. Drink be, be a fan. Be, drink sensibly. Only have your certain amount of units. Um, yeah, be a be a armchair ref or whatever. Yeah. Enjoy your time because you've just been in. You've been immersed in it for so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, I say enjoy time with your little girl and your missus, and uh, I'll see you. Well, I don't man. know when you're gonna just disappear, but I'll see you yeah, very soon. Thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for round two. Top man. <laughs> thanks yeah. for round two, man. Thank you.